But what is really going on here? What's really causing the rapid increase of the price of oil? Are the American public getting ripped off by these oil companies? Let's talk about this with our money huddleists. With us now today oh, is, like <laughs> is the <laughs> president of Zuma Global, Heather Zumaraga, also back with us, business and market analyst and Newsmax contributor, Seth Denson. All right, huddleists. Hi, guys. Great to have you with <laughs> hey, us today. How are you guys doing? All right, so Heather, let's start with you. Earlier, we had uh, Congressman Mark Wayne Mullen on with us to talk about this, and he told us what uh, Congressman Pallone said, but give us your market analysis on this. What is really driving, is it the, these greedy oil companies, is it, are they to blame? No, oh, well, it's very simple. It's that the U.S. under the Biden administration has shut down drilling in this country. And even if you look at the majority of Americans, uh, according to a recent Quinnipiac poll, over 40 percent believed it is due to economic policies enforced by the White House. Only 24 percent blame and point fingers at the war in Ukraine. I mean, gas prices were going up long before uh, February when Russia invaded Ukraine. So look, this is really a circus. They don't want solutions for Americans to have lower prices at the pump. I think they just want to blame people. Any Anytime any company is successful, it seems like the left tries to tear them down. Uh, maybe they need a course in Economics 101. This is capital at risk. Not every year oil and gas companies are profitable. In fact, if you look at it from a business standpoint, uh, the financial sector is the most profitable area, not the energy sector. So they have a lot of research uh, they, they need to do. Oh, I'm sure the big bankers are next. They'll get their Right. A woodshed moment if uh, things don't improve. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people have lost a lot of confidence in our leadership, Seth, and I think people are knowing we were energy independent not that long ago, and they're they're frustrated, they're angry that we're in this position. I mean, obviously, we have to deal with it, but what do you think as far as, you know, the oil price and, and what's raising it, what do you think is driving it right now, and where do you foresee it going? Yeah, you know, this, Heather made a great point. This is econo economics 101. This is supply and demand. And here's the reality. Oil manufacturers re realize that they're dealing with a hostile uh, administration. I mean, listen, the Biden administration just announced they're going to release 180 million barrels over a six-month period. It's about a million barrels a day. Well, guess what? By shutting down the Keystone Pipeline, that was 800,000 barrels a day that they took off the market. Uh, the United States could be a net exporter. Of, of oil and gas, so it could be money makers. So the American public knows this, they recognize this. The, the Biden administration is trying to use this as a red herring. And to Heather's point, if you look back over the last five years, with the exception of just a couple, oil and gas companies are actually, most of their stocks are down or flat. And if you compare that to the S&P 500, right, we should see massive gains. And during the pandemic, the first days of it, they were down over 50%. The American public realizes this. Yes, it's going to be more expensive for a while. That's just the reality. We're going into summer until OPEC increases production and the, and the American oil and gas companies have a reason to do so. They don't have a reason right now. Margins matter. Um, we're going to see gas prices stay up. Yeah, I mean, people oversimplify this issue, I think, so often. Um, and the reality is it's not just President Biden's fault. But Heather, you talked about this and we mentioned this, the polling, the American public feels it. Like, it is his fault solely. I mean, he did do a lot, and you can look at the price of uh, the chart. I think we just showed, showed the video of that in the hearing yesterday. Uh, the price of gas didn't start going up as soon as Russia invaded Ukraine. It started when Joe Biden took over right. as president. Right. And, uh, I mean, Chevron CEO in these hearings said, just to be clear, we do not control the market price of crude oil, natural gas, or gasoline. They have no tolerance for, for price gouging, full stop. Uh, Exxon CEOs also echoed the same sentiment saying it's a function of supply and demand. And then you have BP CEO saying, wait a minute, here's, here's the biggest, I think, most important point, that they only own, BP, 10% of the 7,500, 7,500 independent gas stations right. that, that have their gasoline where they sell it. They don't control the price directly, the independent small business owners, and they have to make a profit. So, I mean, maybe they leave gas prices up a little bit longer and oil prices have come down. It takes some time for the market to adjust. But it's not the big oil execs that right. are owning the gas stations on their corner. And but it gives the Democrats a chance to bring them to task up on you yeah, know, this was, Congress and, you know, get their photo exercise, off. political exercise, like so many other things, too. Mm -hmm. and, and you go out and talk to any of these independent operators that own these small gas stations, one or two mom and pop shops here. They are not living the most luxurious lifestyle. Mm -hmm. these, these situations are hard for them as well. Great to see you both, Seth and Heather. Always fun. Thanks, John. Thanks, with Bianca. With our Yes. Thank you. Great <laughs> insight. Up words here. <laughs> All right. Great to see everyone.